Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So today what I want to do is take apart this microwave. Found it on garbage day, unfortunately it doesn't work. And the nice thing about microwaves is they are 100% scrappable material. There's a lot of steel, there's some copper, there's some brass, there's some aluminum. And one of my subscribers actually asked a good question and asked, can they be dangerous to take apart? And the answer is yes. Unfortunately, every year there are a couple people who are electrocuted when taking apart a microwave. And that is because every microwave has inside a capacitor. This is a capacitor from a different microwave. And the danger of a capacitor is they can hold a very deadly charge of electricity. Okay, uh, I've heard some that can go up to about 5,000 watts, which is a very, very strong charge that could create a lot of problems. So um, the first thing my rule is whenever I scrap a microwave, I will always leave it unplugged for about a week, a week and a half. And that will um, hopefully it decrease the chance of the capacitors holding a charge. There are other methods that I will take or other things that I will do to ensure that um, I reduce any other risk. So I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna show you all the goodies inside, how to separate them properly, how to sort them, and more importantly, how to divert safely another microwave from the landfill. So here we go. For the sake of this video, I have already removed the exterior uh, screws. So the first thing, this panel is metal. If I take a magnet, which I'm going to do, um, it is steel. There it is. Okay, so it holds. And the nice thing about steel right now is steel is going for about $259 a ton. So it's a great thing to start collecting. Uh, doesn't take a lot to add weight, so that's great. Um, and as you can see inside, when I turn this, here are the guts of the microwave. I've got a, a magnetron here. I have a circuit board that has copper. There is a fan over here that has uh, copper as well. I have a transformer on the bottom that could be either aluminum or copper. Um, some silver contacts in the panel. But the first thing I do need to tackle before I um, look at anything else is the capacitor, which is right down there. So the first thing I did after I took the uh, top off is I actually remove the screws on the bottom Okay, so I am gonna save this metal plate for later because I'm gonna put it right back on But as you can see the capacitor there. I'm gonna turn this a little bit. Actually. I'll just move it up so you can see it Okay, um, there is my capacitor and the capacitor is always connected to There we go Sorry, connected to the magnetron with some cords or cables. I cut those. Um, and I always want to use uh, rubber handled pliers or cutters um, just to ensure uh, my maximum safety. Um, the capacitor is just held in with uh, a screw. There's a screw that keeps it or a clamp that keeps it down to the frame. And the first thing I do want to do is I'm just going to pull the cables off here, the connectors. Okay, and as I said, I'm not saying there's any charge left on this because I have left it, but I don't want to take the chance. And the first thing I'm going to do is, because this is rubber, I'm just going to touch the two, okay? And there is no spark, there is no charge, uh, but again, I think because I leave this for a week and a half, there really is no more charge left, but I definitely don't want to take the chance. Um, and there are other methods. I'm going to get people commenting saying you should have rubber gloves on um, to do this. I have already tested it, so it is not um, harmful. But that wouldn't hurt uh, if you took those uh, laundry rubber gloves and put them on. But definitely, definitely want to make sure that your pliers or um, needle nose pliers do have rubberized handles to ensure uh, safety. I have handled capacitors hundreds of them and I have never had a shock, but I don't want today to be the first. <laughs> so first thing I'm gonna do is it's just bolted in by a screw, as I said. I'm gonna just take that out. Okay, it's just a clamp. Okay, there is my capacitor. I have also seen other videos where uh, the outside is aluminum, so if I put a magnet to it, uh, I've had someone I've seen take the uh, cap off to get the aluminum. I don't recommend that because there is a lot of oil in there, so 
it's not really worth that much. Um, I will just collect these and actually just bring them in as capacitors. So they pay by weight. Not much, but definitely better than going to the landfill. But this is your danger zone, uh, which I said capacitor. If I look at this, it has, um, oh, I don't even know how to read this, but it just says danger, high voltage. So you definitely want to be very, very careful with these, okay? So make sure that you uh, leave it, let it sit before you tackle this, okay? So now that this is gone, there is no more potential of an electric charge, which is great. Uh, I already also have my, mag uh, my um, transformer here. And unfortunately, when we start looking at transformers in the newer models of microwaves, one thing that scrappers have started to figure out is the manufacturers are now replacing the copper coils with aluminum. So uh, what I am gonna do is my next video, I actually have another old microwave. I'm actually gonna compare an old microwave with a new one, um, found both of them on garbage day and see how much difference in copper content they have, uh, the whole microwave. Okay, so in order to get this uh, transformer off, there are screws on the bottom panel. There's four. Okay, so now that is off. This is steel. As I said, I'm going to hold this off the side. I'm going to put this back on my microwave after. Okay, so here is my transformer. Every transformer has two uh, spools of wire. And you want to check. Sometimes you will have two spools that are copper, especially the older models. Sometimes you'll have copper, aluminum. Sometimes you'll have aluminum, copper. Sometimes you'll have aluminum, aluminum. So before I actually take this apart to get um, the copper out, if it's copper, I want to check if it's copper, okay? Um, I could also bring this in as is. At the scrapyard, transformers, they are own category. They're about 15 cents a pound right now. And this is about a pound, 1.1 uh, pound. So I'm gonna get about 16 cents for this hole. Uh, but as I said, if one of these spools is copper, currently this would be number two copper, and number two copper is going for about 370 a pound Canadian or 360 a pound Canadian. So it's definitely worth your while to get that out. It's very simple to take a transformer apart. However, if I scratch both of these and they are metallic looking inside, it means they are aluminum and it's not worth my time because aluminum is a lot less and I don't need to waste um, time taking that out because it's not really worth the extra couple cents. So first thing I'm going to do before I tackle it is I'm going to take a file. I'm just going to rub this spool first. And as you can see, that is metallic. So that is aluminum, but I'm not going to despair yet because now I want to look at this one. So I have to open this up just using a, a knife. I'm going to put safety glasses on as well. Um, or I can use a screwdriver just to pry up the paper. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. So the first thing I just want to expose the wires as best I can so I can actually do the scratch test. Okay. So as I said, it's just tape inside that. Okay. So now I'm exposing it and what I'm going to do again, as I said, I'm going to do the scratch test. Just going to rub it. First of all, get out of the paper. All right, here we go. Get a good scratch going. I got it. There is also a piece, a quick little thin piece of paper on there that I have to make sure that I scratch through first. And unfortunately, as you can see there, this is metallic as well. So both of these are metallic, which means they're both aluminum. So I'm actually just gonna leave this as is and get transformer weight, okay? Um, and I, as I said, I've seen even newer models will have sometimes this copper. So you do wanna check. Don't assume just because this is a newer model that it's gonna be completely aluminum because it depends on the make, it depends on the model, it depends on where it's made. Um, so definitely do the scratch test for both every time, okay? So here is my transformer. A lot of people, this is still the bottom. This is a small motor that actually um, turns the plate and a lot of people will actually forget about this one. 
right? Though there's so much of a hurry thinking that just because at the top there's all the guts, but this one does actually also hold some nice spool of copper. It's just connected after I take the screw out. Uh, I gotta pull it, there it is. So I am gonna open this one up very quickly for you. Uh, very simple to do, as you can see, little small motor. There are some copper windings, and all it is is there's a face plate here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in a vise, I'm just gonna hit it with a screwdriver to open that. Okay, so I'm gonna do that for you, turn this. Get a hammer, open this up. pop out as you can see another piece of steel right here inside there's a couple gears they got a little bit of glue on it I'm gonna knock those out and it reveals a second plate here okay I just got to pop this out now as well I could use a screwdriver just pop it under okay get it under there pull it up uh, I could also use um, another gadget or a plier, but I'm just going to pull it. Okay, there, pull, pull, snap, pull this out. Okay, I've also I got to take the face plate off, which I'm going to do. Get a screwdriver underneath. Okay. There we go. Sometimes it's just stuck. So you can see inside some nice spool of copper. Okay. Just gotta make sure I grab it. And probably also because the camera's on me. There it is. Okay, and pry that plate up. There it is. Okay, so another piece of steel. There is my copper spool. It just comes out. Steel, and look at that nice spool of copper. Okay, so what I will do is this, because it's so fine, even though it looks like bare bright, um, because it is so fine uh, strand, this is still gonna be number two copper. Uh, I'm going to throw these prongs into my uh, copper as well because they are copper connectors. Um, but again, a little bit of copper, this all adds up. I put it into a bag and, you know, um, I will bring it in as number two copper. And at today's price, it's about $2.60 a pound. Okay, so I'm going to turn this now back over. It has a really nice connector here. Um, I'm going to first of all take this small little circuit board off. You can see that. Uh, I'm going to save the magnetron for last because it's the biggest and could also run risks of health problems that I will get into further uh, as I get to it. But I want to just quickly take off this control panel and cut off the uh, appliance cord. Now, in Canada, this appliance cord, okay, it's got some really nice brass coated brass prongs some people leave these on the appliance wire uh, for the weight some people take them off and with a cord like this in canada this would go for a dollar 21 a pound uh, this would be classified as what we call 40 percent copper recovery so appliance wire has two categories 40 percent copper recovery and 60 percent because this has an outer coating and three strands inside that have additional coating, that means that there is more plastic to cover uh, to copper ratio. So um, I would get $1.21 a pound. Some people will, if they have a um, stripper, they will put it in and they will just take the uh, outer layer off. Because the outer layer is off, it'll just be one coating uh, of copper on the, or uh, uh, insulation on the copper wire which would mean there's higher copper recovery, so it'd put to 60%, which would be currently $1.81 a pound. For me, um, this wire, I would probably run it through my stripper because it only takes a second. If you don't have a stripper, another method is you could put it into your um, vise and just put a knife down it. It's up to you, but again, this is still going as is for $1.21 a pound, so a nice score. 
it's not a pound, but it's pretty close, okay? But as I said too, some people take the brass off. This brass would be going for $2.53 a pound Canadian right now. So I do actually pull those off and put them into my brass bucket, but it's entirely up to you. Okay, so the circuit board that I have right here, here is some more copper, okay? And this would be classified, if I was to take this in as is, this is a lower grade circuit board. Uh, there isn't any precious metals on there. Some scrap yards will take all circuit boards, put them together and give you one price. Some, and you have to check with your scrap yard, will be high grade, medium grade, low grade, and it all depends on the metals on side. Uh, because there's no gold and silver on this, this would be low grade. It's not worth much. However, before I take this in, I want to cut off this copper and put this into my number two. It's just connected by four um, little um, anchors, if you will, so I just cut those. Um, and the donut that it goes around is steel, very easy to take off. You can just hit it with a hammer, it'll break and, un and unravel. As I said, the copper, if I took this copper off and separate it, I'm actually going to get more money for the copper than I would for the circuit board um, as is um, because you do not make a lot of money on circuit boards. Um, so definitely want to take the copper off there. And I actually have another video on um, taking copper wire off of circuit boards. It is a lot better. It is well worth it. So if you're interested, go check that out. Okay, I have... A couple silver contacts. I want to go to the control box, which is on the door. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, it's just connected by a couple screws. So I'm just going to release this, get to it. Um, and I'm actually going to take the magnetron off while I'm at it, just with some screws. Okay, so just so I can get at it. Hope you can see that. So I'm just at the top right here with a screw. Okay, I'm sorry this is a bigger, uh, a bigger microwave, um, but I will just um, quickly actually just put something underneath so you can see it. I'll lift it up a little bit. There, so there you go. I'm just gonna take this Magnetron off. And as I said, it's just connected by some screws. What I do with my screws, someone, in, another subscriber asked, what do you do with all your screws? Um, I will actually, if they're in great condition, I will use them, but the amount of scrapping that I do, I don't need this many screws. So I actually will put them into a bin um, and bring them into the scrap yard for steel weight. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, scrappers bring them in without actually taking the time uh, to, um, you know, put them on properly uh, or separate them properly. I've seen some that fall out of trucks and that's just asking for disaster. Uh, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people will get flat tires from it. Okay, so here's my uh, Magnetron I'm gonna get to. Okay, but uh, I wanna get to this control panel and I also wanna get to this fan. So, the first thing, I'm just gonna pull the fan off. And I'm just gonna actually, there are some pins on the bottom here. I'm just gonna cut that quickly. Actually, very simple. Because I don't need this, I'm just gonna take a pry bar. Okay, so inside of here, again, another copper spool. This connects to the fan that uh, cools off the microwave. Definitely uh, worth it. You just unscrew this, uh, and I'm gonna do that for you. Okay, so I'll do that first, because this is another nice spool of copper. Okay, and as I said, some people use a drill. I think this is just therapeutic, uh, using a screwdriver. Okay, there are also on the bottom, once I take this off, there is also, to maximize my profit, there is some more um, copper. Take this fan off. Okay. Um, but nice spool of copper, and all I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna just put it in a vise, I'm gonna hit it out. It's actually just connected by a couple little pins. Um, this copper I will also take off and I will cut. Uh, very easy, I'll just cut and then I'll fold it and it'll uh, slide off. So there is copper 
a uh, couple little pieces. It's not much, but it adds up. Okay. But I'm gonna put this in the vise right now. Okay, and all I'm gonna do actually is just hit it with a hammer. I'm gonna hit it out. Okay, unfortunately, because there is still a pin in here. Oh, there we go. Maybe, it's because this pin is here, I've got to take that out first. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut that pin <laughs> because I can't get it into my vise if I don't. Um, if I was speeding this up, what I'm gonna do now, just gonna put it in the vise. Hammers are awesome. Okay, there we go. So, as you can see, a nice spool of copper. Um, I'm just gonna take the steel out of there. I just push it out. Okay, so here's some more steel. And I'm just gonna cut this open. Look at this. All I'm doing is cutting the top plastic part off and the copper is just going to fold off. Okay, so really nice spool of copper. This is gonna go into my number two as well. Okay, so getting back to, unfortunately, I have a little bit of plastic that's gonna go into the garbage. The control panel here has some screws. Now I can get at because the transformer and magnetron are gone. Okay, so control panel. This is the control panel that connects to the door. Okay, and the buttons. Okay, so a couple of screws that you have to get. And this will slide out. And the nice thing about one of these control panels is, once I cut the wires off, okay, a lot of lower grade wire here. Um, or actually, sorry, not lower grade. All of this wire, if I'm looking at right now, is what we classify as um, your 40% copper recovery because it is only one coating, okay? So on the control panel, a couple interesting things. Here is a transformer, small one. This does have copper and this is worth taking out. Uh, there are a couple silver contact boxes. So these boxes, actually, if you break them open, they have, and I'm just gonna show you one right now, there is some silver and also a copper spool. So all I just did there, very simple, is I'm just gonna take a screwdriver and I just separate them. Okay, I'm gonna put the screwdriver underneath. Okay, um, very easy. I'm just gonna hit it with a hammer on the bottom to break it open. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want it to slide out. All right, so the bottom is now off. So inside, I'm gonna slide this out now. Actually, I put a screwdriver inside to open it up a little bit more just to crush the side off. So as you can see inside now, I've just revealed the spool of copper. And on this side, there are, if I pull that back, the little dots there. That dot, that dot, those are silver. So those are silver contacts. So what I do is I actually cut those off. I will put them into a vial. And one day I'm hoping to hit it with some uh, nitric acid and make myself a small silver bouillon, okay? And there are other silver contacts as well in the door. Uh, and they actually look a little bit different from that. So I'm just gonna get those right now. Okay, so they will come off of the door. Uh, there's always a plastic uh, box, black plastic box that you want to get. Um, 
okay it's in the door frame just gonna open this a little bit okay there's the light bulb don't need the light bulb but I want to get the frame door and it's connected there's the screw sorry I had to get that screw up first all right so last screw on the door that I need to get all right is there Okay, and it holds in a black apparatus that always carries with it about three or four silver contact boxes. Okay, so just give me a second, get that out. A lot of screws, okay? Not hard to take one of these apart, just a lot of screws. Okay, so here we go. The light bulb. All right. So inside, there are other silver contact boxes. These ones, if I break this open, there will not be copper, but there will be silver contacts again. So there's usually three. So there's one, two, three. This wire, as I said, because it is only one um, strand of uh, insulation, this will be 60% recovery. So you want to put that in your 60% recovery. So that's great as well. The rest of this is going to be going into my steel pile but interesting as well a lot of people also don't realize is the control panel if I use a knife I'm just going to actually peel this up I gotta use a okay I'm just going to peel this up take the face plate off there is interesting I'm just going to it up. There's two layers. There we go. Okay, sometimes it is just stuck on there good. Got to get some glue and some muscle power. But interesting is if I peel this up, which I'm doing now, the control panel which is this, has silver in it. These are all silver um, um, wires that go through it or a small silver, um, whatever you wanna call that stuff. So I actually do, there's two layers of it. I will actually put this into my silver recovery bin as well. So there is silver there. Oh, so that is only on the push buttons. Okay, and the rest of this is, as I said, is gonna go into my steel pile. I'm gonna make sure I gather up all my screws. Okay, and the nice thing about one of these is I can actually now use this to keep all my steel in, right? It's a nice holder. Okay, last thing I want to look at is the magnetron. Very simple, a magnetron, very good source of copper. It's a good source of brass. I actually have a video on taking apart magnetrons uh, safely. So for this video, I'm actually not going to take this one apart. Um, uh, I, if you're interested, go check out the other one. These can be dangerous, especially the older models, because the ceramic around this can con contain beryllium, okay? So very harmful. Uh, the nice thing about a magnetron is there's some copper in here. There is some aluminum, two beautiful magnets uh, that I use for teaching, and some brass. As I said, please go check out my other video on taking a magnetron apart safely, because uh, I give you a step-by-step -step and due to time and length, uh, it's something you do want to put your attention to as well. So, uh, please go check that out. Just to recap with this microwave, I said great scrappable item. You have a transformer that's unfortunately um, aluminum, but still 16 cents. I have lots of nice number two copper spools. I have a magnetron that I still have to take apart. I have a lot of steel. I have several silver contact boxes. I have a really nice cord. And again, I was able to safely um, make sure that this did not have a charge and was able to take it out um, freely and you know without incidents. So again, microwave, I am gonna have an upcoming video. I'm gonna actually, on another one, take apart all the copper. I'm gonna separate it. And I am going to compare it to an older microwave to see if the newer ones 
are less copper than the old ones. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.